Greetings everyone and welcome back to another episode of Pony Panels. And this one is important. Why? Because it ties into Season 7. How exactly we do not know. But it's time to re-enter the world of the main comic series. Mainly... Comics 51 through 53. Now, 53 was released today, so if you haven't read those comics, go to Comixology or to iTunes, where you can practically find anything, and pick those comics up, read those, and then come back here. If you have read them, well, stick around and find out what I've thought about it. Well, this storyline introduces some interesting things, like the idea that you can erase history with a simple spell. It wouldn't be so surprising to me, except for the notion that, well, Messing with history has proven proven by the cutie remark can have disastrous consequences. It doesn't have nearly the disastrous consequences as it does in that episode, which leaves me a little bit puzzled. But let me back up. This comic starts out with a mysterious there is somebody ramsacks Twilight's castle. What? You can't get her guards! She's a royal princess and you can't get her guards! I mean, come on! Seriously? It's found out that Homeboy is after some Pacific books, for reasons we do not know. He's later found out after a trip to a, to the Ponyville Mu Canterlot Museum, who this guy is. Meet Shadowlock. He's not necessarily, as we find out in 53, evil. But he was born into an evil family. And because of that, he wants to eliminate all evil from everything. Especially his own bloodline. And he goes to extreme measures by wiping out some of the most important moments in equestrian history. With some real world references to boot, like Cleopatra and others. And it's up to our intrepid Army 6, Sans Starlight, oddly, to, to stop this evil force and get the history back. But. Shadowlock proved more than a force for our intrepid group in in 52. Two, but decides to talk it out with Twilight in 53. Odd. Surprisingly civil, Shadowlock is. Explaining his entire backstory including how he found out about the evil origins within his family, and how he became dedicated to erasing things for the good of all people. Noble spot and noble reason, but it leads to the moral reason of this entire comic. It's an old saying that has been said, repeated, used in fiction just about anywhere you've ever heard it and if you've never said it you're one of a very few people 
those do, that do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Something, something that Shadowlock is not really aware of. You see, 51 and 52 are very good character building books and build up the tension nicely with beautiful artwork. And Shadowlock does come out as an intimidating and surprisingly smart challenge for our intrepid heroes. But in 53, when we find find out the truth of why, he becomes surprisingly sympathetic. And we tend to end up rooting for the guy on the base notion notion of what he's trying to do. If all evil was erased from history, then there would be no evil. Even though it's for selfish reasons, the thought has crossed the mind of many a time travel story or even our own daily lives. We all want to have something where we can go back and erase a mistake or two or an entire bad seed from our family, let's say, in hopes that it would make our life better. But as Twilight explains, you don't really need to go to that far extreme stream to do that. All you need to do is learn, remember, and do your best not to repeat. To build your own history so that despite all the evil or bad choices you've made, made your good deeds are more remembered in history rather than the bad ones. Now granted, 53 has some great historical references and some great traps which all the army six get get over each of their book voice traps by using each of their advantages. Rarities, Rarity's appreciation for good looks and fashion, Fluttershy's ability, ability to talk the dragons and calm people down, i.e. compassion, and somewhat of Applejack's wits. Man, if Applejack could actually be useful in the main show now, I'd be a lot heavier. But what's the setup for season 7, you might ask? Well, that's kind of the negative of this comic. If it's supposed to be tied into Season 7, the comic doesn't do a good enough job at explaining how. Yes, there are a couple of comic flirts in 53 that may explain all that visually, but without, without any vocal tones and a few lines from Shadowlock, Referencing somebody of a great evil that he's trying to pre prevent from returning. We're not given a lot of information to go off of. Although the comic clearly teases that something is in the works at the end of 53. But sadly, this important plot point and the whole reason why From the Shadows even exists as a comic art is not really used or explained to drive it. It's the individual story of Shadowlock and him learning, learning that history can be a good thing if rightly applied. Sadly, for the first notion of the comics being connected to the true canon, this comic series drops the ball on that notion 
which brings it down a few points. It's not to say that the comic series series set isn't a great set though. Shadow Rock comes off as a sympathetic yet at his most powerful moments really intimidating and smart foil for the group. The historical references and the way that the characters get out of the said traps in 53 are right to their character with with some smart and witty jokes th thrown in for good measure. Artwork is excellent, char characters are built right, and the situation does bring about some dread. Although the main reasoning of how this all began might be a rocky, the way it got there got there through clever adventure and use of each of the character's strengths makes the comic surprisingly stronger than it is, even if it fails at its initial purpose of teasing for things to come. Sadly, this leads to a rating on a harmony scale of a 4 out of 6. Although the comic is a great read, 52, 52 and 53 especially for this arc, the arc bill falls flat in executing what it needs to do to lead to the greater series. The moral is a great one, if not repeated through other forms of fiction, fiction twilight, of course, in our infinite wisdom, expresses the moral greatly and shows why, let's be honest, she's the best personal feeling. But by and large, this comic might be rated higher if it leads to something truly fantastic in the series like it's meant to. This is an important read, even if it doesn't feel like it. So pick up the comic arc series of 51 through 53, three a draw or comic book store, comicologies, iTunes, or just use the just use the YouTube channel I went to, Chrono Shenron. I'll make sure to leave a link to him in the description so that you can read this and any other comic that has ever been reviewed as part of the Pony Panel series. Next time we do this, it will be the second edition of Legends of Magic. If you missed out on our review for Friends for Forever's final issue, as as well as last week's episode review for Rock Solid Friendship, make sure to get to maybe this point of the video and click on the two annotations. And if you like what you see and want more entertainment or My Little Pony material, click on our logo annotation to subscribe. I'm Nirvana Sparkle, find peace in your own Nirvana, and thanks for watching.